it's a great pleasure to welcome you all. Unfortunately, as last year, we had to delay the meeting from early December and revert to Zoom due to the disruption of COVID. However, once again, we are hopeful that we'll be able to hold our annual meeting uh, for 2022 in our traditional celebratory format in early December. In spite of the many restrictions due to COVID concerns, the Land Trust had an active and successful year. We were able to hold our annual members benefit in September outside at Alice and Jim Hicks's beautiful property on Beardsley Book Road on a glorious summer evening. 170 members and guests attended. Earlier in the year, we had a very successful membership drive, both from a dollar and new member perspective. These two events are the Land Trust's major revenue providers. And thanks to our members' generosity, the Land Trust remains in a strong financial position. There were many highlights during the year, and I'll be calling upon Connie Manis, our executive director, to review them with you a little later in the meeting. Notable among them were the transfer of the Iron Mountain Preserve to the Kent Land Trust from the Nature Conservancy with an easement granted to our friends at the Northwest Connecticut Land Conservancy. The Harrison family donation of a splendid 70 acre property contiguous to our Skiff Mountain South Preserve and a very robust food security program during the summer months initiated and managed by Megan Henney, a resident farmer to help those in need in Kent. As chair, I'm indeed fortunate to have such a supportive membership an engaged board, strong committee heads and a very active staff. My grateful thanks to you all. While I normally would have the opportunity to introduce directors and staff to you at our in-person annual meetings, of course, this has not been possible now for two years. So I thought I would quickly run through the names in the organization, many of which will be familiar to you. As chair, I'm supported by first vice chair, Alice Hicks, and second vice chair, Laura Rothschild, who is also chair of the Finance Committee. This triumvirate, together with Laurie Shesell, Secretary, and Jim Norton, Treasurer, formed the Land Trust Executive Committee. The other 12 directors are Daryl Chanisky, Chair of Stewardship Committee, Ken Cooper, Chair of Nominating Committee, Laurie Doss, Darcy Frisch, Diane Meyer, Co-Chair of the Development Committee with together with Jason Wright, Wendy Murphy, Janet Nelson, Chair of the Farm Committee, Todd Powell, Dana Slaughter, Chair of the Programs and Communications Committee, Bob Tobin, Chair of the Acquisitions Committee, Kevin Ume, and my, Mark Weingarten. As you might imagine, all directors serve on multiple committees. Now, if you just have a quick look uh, to the side of the slide, you will see mm -hmm. the board has some serious bench strength with our board of advisors and emeritus director. As you will see, there is my predecessor, Jane Klein. I see Tony Zanino there, another former president, and of course, our emeritus uh, director, Bill Arnold. Our energetic staff is headed by Executive Director Connie Manis. Our program manager is Melissa Chanisky. Our land manager is Clark Gifford. And our office manager is Gwyn Seifert. Our resident farmer at Marble Valley Farm on the Land Trust property is Megan Haney. So this is the team managing and guiding the Land Trust today. And now it gives me great pleasure to call upon Connie Manis to review 2021 activities and to give you a brief look at some 2022 
two items of interest. Connie, please. Hello, everyone, and let me second Michael's welcome. It's my pleasure to share with you a quick recap of 2021 at the Land Trust. Because we do have some new members joining us tonight, I thought I'd first say a word about what our Land Trust is and does. Across the United States, nonprofit land trusts are a significant counterpart to federal, state, and local governments in protecting our environment through conserving critically important natural resources and open lands. Here in Connecticut, most land trusts formed at the local community level, including this one, founded in 1989 by concerned Kent residents. Since that time, the Kent Land Trust has conserved over 3,000 acres by either taking title to land by purchase or donation, or by accepting responsibility to enforce a perpetual conservation easement, prohibiting development on privately owned land. On the land it owns, KLT has 10 nature preserves with trails that are open to the public. Trail maps and information are available on our website, which is easy to remember, www.kentlandtrust.org. Protecting property is not the end of the story. In fact, it's the very beginning, as we promise to take care of these lands forever. So keeping a close eye on the condition of protected land and managing it in accordance with best practices will always be a core component of our work. Complementing land protection and stewardship, the third pillar of our work is our programs, which are informed by our commitment to serve the community and the public and seek to meet community needs through education, engagement, and entertainment. We're honored to hold these responsibilities and frankly, it's our great pleasure to do so. Here are a few examples of how this played out in 2021 and what we envision for the coming year. Beginning with land protection, last year we were honored to assume responsibility for the Iron Mountain Preserve in South Kent, which was legally transferred to us by the Nature Conservancy to bolster the preserve's forever protection as it came with no deed restrictions. We've granted a conservation easement over the entirety to Northwest Connecticut Land Conservancy. The Iron Mountain Preserve has been a community resource since 1974, when Mrs. Walter Irving donated a large portion of Irving Farm. Her gift was augmented by three neighbors over the course of the next 17 years. Throughout the 80s and 90s, Iron Mountain was cared for by neighbors in the Treasure Hill, Deer Mountain Road area. At just over 300 acres, within a larger core forest block of nearly 900 acres and connecting several other preserved properties, the preserve forms a core part of Kent's Gear Mountain panorama. There is a quiet wooded lollipop loop trail with features including stone walls indicating former pasture, distinctive charcoal mounds, and plenty of wildlife to see and track. We closed on this property masked and outside of Kent's town hall on a frigid day in the early January. Thanks to modern technology, we were joined by Mrs. Irving's son, Griggs, and his children, among others, who excitedly welcomed this new chapter in her conservation legacy. Then in September, we were thrilled to receive the donation of 70 acres on Skiff Mountain from Sewell Harrison and her siblings. This property adjoins our Skiff Mountain South Preserve where you see the red arrow here on the left. Skiff Mountain South has a lovely trail system and serves as a learning laboratory for Marvelwood School students and others. The habitat supports five state listed birds, reptiles and mammals and has features of historical and cultural importance. In 2002, 2022, excuse me, we're planning a new trail here which in addition to extending the Skip Mountain South system will allow connections between trails that are managed by the Sharon Land Trust, Pond Mountain Natural Area, and the Appalachian Trail to Caleb's Peak. Now, speaking of trail building, while most of our ongoing maintenance is handled by land manager Clark Gifford, we are very grateful for a hardworking band of volunteers, many of whom are here with us tonight. Led by Stewardship Committee Chair Daryl Chernisky, this group includes board members, but also many additional members of the community who gather from time to time to create new trails or conduct maintenance on existing ones. 
or to work on habitat improvement projects such as removing invasives and replanting with native plants. If this sounds like something you'd enjoy, the more the merrier. This is a great way to get involved and we encourage you to reach out. The contributions of our dedicated volunteers are essential to our organization and we are so thankful for their terrific help. On the program side, as I mentioned, we follow the objective of keeping you informed, involved, and entertained. After 2020's year of pauses and closures, we also embraced the mantra that 21, 2021 sorry, was the, the year of yes. And the year of yes meant a sharp increase in our programming. In partnership with Audubon Sharon, we ran in-person workshops on forest bird habitats in the Tobin Preserve. In partnership with the Marvelwood School, we hosted Kent Center School field trips to learn about macroinvertebrates. We began a pollinator pathway pro project to promote connectivity of native habitat supporting insects and birds. In partnership with the Kent Memorial Library and the Kent Farmers Market, we worked to make sure community members have the resources they need to support the ecosystem with their own garden. Participating weekly in the farmer's market at the sidewalk sales and at Kent Barnes second Saturdays provided so many great opportunities to talk with community members about how they are working to make a difference, whether by incorporating pollinator friendly practices into their landscaping, getting out and hiking, supporting local farmers, or caring for Kent's food insecure. The year of yes also meant expanding our internship programs to introduce conservation work and provide professional experience to youth in our area. We were fortunate to host six interns, including high school and college age youth and a college graduate. We also partnered with Audubon Connecticut in their junior forest stewards program. Our interns expanded our capacity in every aspect of our programming and provided insightful perspectives from upcoming leaders. The year of yes meant we committed to providing entertainment, including summer concerts in partnership with the Park and Recreation Commission and Kent Lions Club, our first ever winter concert as part of the Kent Gingerbread Festival featuring Wanda Houston, and a surprise guest appearance by Santa on a motorcycle. We had fun getting creative with hay bales in the Southern Gateway for Halloween and the Gingerbread Fest. And of course, hosted our usual Connecticut Trails Day hikes, as well as special hike events for seniors and for young families. Now, Marble Valley Farm is a Kent community treasure, and we feel very fortunate to have such an amazing variety of delicious, healthy veggies at our fingertips from June through November. Thank you to Megan Haney and her terrific farm crew, Selena, Larissa, and Ale. But did you know that food insecurity is at an all-time high in Litchfield County? Financial stress and income disruption is hard enough without the immediate worry about how to put food on the table. This year, in response to increased food insecurity in Kent, we launched a new program to provide grade A, just picked, abundant shares of produce on a weekly basis to 40 customers at the food bank. We were amazed by the outpouring of support from our community, and together we raised enough to fund all 26 weeks of the 2021 growing season. It was so wonderful to be able to help in this way, and we can't wait to do it again in 2022. On the fundraising side, not everything was a yes in 2021. We really missed our spring wine tastings, which are again a question mark with this latest Omicron surge, but we were able to celebrate outdoors for our much anticipated fall benefit, graciously hosted by KLT's Vice Chair, Alice Hicks, and husband Jim at their historic Philo Beardsley Barn in beautiful Kent Hollow and have every hope of holding a benefit again this fall. It's tentatively calendared for September 17th. Last but not least, this past fall, we were awarded a renewal of our land trust accreditation with commendations and no expectations for improvement. 
KLT was the second land trust in Connecticut to become accredited back when the program was very new and we've remained accredited ever since, attesting to our excellence in business practices and capacity for long-term organizational and financial space sustainability. So it turned out so well, we think we'll do another year of yes. 2022 will include a full calendar of outdoor events to keep you informed, involved, and entertained. We'll make sure there are things for kids to do on school holidays, like our customary tracking hike on President's Day and a program at the farm during spring break. We'll do outdoor concerts, host programs about vernal pools, teach you how to use mapping applications, conduct bio blitzes and bird counts, go on trail stay hikes, and hold our community picnic on Memorial Day. We've planned more field trips with our elementary and high schools, and we'll see you at the farmer's market and with lemonade at public community events. We'll support summer internships and youth service, and we'll double down with our food security and pollinator pathway initiative, which by the way, we have a fantastic program happening on Zoom tomorrow at 4 p.m. Professor Douglas Tallamy will present and answer questions about how to support native income ecosystems, sorry, in our own backyard. I hope that you will join us. He's really fantastic. And I thank you for getting involved. Now I'll pass the floor back to Michael for the election of directors. Thank you, Connie. We now come to the short business part of the meeting, which is the election of directors. And Connie, would you please adjust the screen so that all attendees are visible? Okay. Um, we have five current directors who are being nominated for a further three year term. They are Alice Hicks, Laura Rothschild, Ken Cooper, Diane Meyer, and Janet Nelson. As the nominating chair, Ken Cooper is one of the nominees being proposed for re-election. He's restricted from making the motion for his own re-election. Therefore, on his behalf, it gives me great pleasure to move that these five current directors be elected for a further three year term. Now, I would like a seconder for this motion. And if somebody would raise their hands, thank you, Tony Zanino. Uh, all those in favor would please raise their hands. Thank you, thank you. Any against will signify in the same manner. I see none. Um, the vote is unanimous, and therefore I declare Alice Hicks, Laura Rothschild, Ken Cooper, Diane Meyer, and Janet Nelson duly elected as directors for a further three-year term. We now move to the question period, and if you would like to ask a question, please signify by raising your hand, and I will call upon you. That any questions out there? I can't see ev everybody, but Connie, can you? Uh... I see Lynn Worthington, who is waving her hand in the camera. All right. Lynn, would you um, unmute yourself and ask your question, please? Uh, sure. Uh, my only question is, will the... Um... Hiking challenge come back. I had a lot of fun with that. I was wondering if you guys might bring that back. Okay, it's Connie. A it's a great question, Lynn. You know what, we've had the uh, request from several people. So I believe that we will work on a hiking challenge. Uh, and, and we at one time, I guess back in 2020, had a pretty good theme that we may just pick back up, um, but uh, but I, I know that others share your sentiments, so we would like to roll that out again for 2022. It's the year of yes, so yes. <laughs> um, all right, any more questions? Thank you, Lynn. Any more questions out there? Any hands raised that you see, Connie? Just toggling between screens. 
I don't see any. All right. Um, this brings us then to the conclusion of the meeting. Before we leave, I would like to thank you all for attending and on behalf of the Kent Land Trust to wish you all a very happy and healthy new year. We look forward to seeing you on one of our trails or at one of our future events. And now a motion for conclusion of the meeting is in order. Is there a mover, please? I'm looking for a hand. We, thank you, Jane. Is there a seconder, please? Do we see a seconder? I'm sure there's one. No seconders? <laughs> there are many, Michael. I'm going to pick Darcy. I second it. Lori Doss seconds. <laughs> Thank you, Lori. Uh, and uh, all those in favor will please raise their hand. Thank you. The motion is carried and the meeting is now concluded. Thanks, everybody.